Well, shalom, brethren, and howdy and hi, and welcome to another presentation of the Branches of Yah. Today, I want to share with you the word for cedar and a little bit about the cedar tree as we see throughout Scripture. And this wonderful little nugget I found, I just had to share it with the brethren. So let's get right into it and take a look. Okay, so as we see the cedar trees of Lebanon, we can see the cedar trees of Lebanon are used quite often in Scripture. Matter of fact, 48 times. So what is our Abba, the Creator, trying to tell us? Well, first, what is the cedar tree? And why does it garner such value still to this day? But before we get into that, let's look at a spiritual meaning of the cedar tree in the Abrith, or the Hebrew language, and that's Arez. Arez is H730 in the Strong's numbering, and it is a cedar tree from the tenacity of its roots. Now, you can see over on the left, it's Aleph, which is the ox head. And that's the ox, the strength or the leader, father or Abba. And is value as one, the one over all, before all, Yahuwah the Father. Resh, being of course a picture of the head, is the head or authority, the prince or exalted, the covering over all. And that's 200, which equals the insufficiency of man and sufficiency of our Heavenly Father. Zayin, as you can see, the pictograph is a plow. And the plow, it is... A plow or harvest, a weapon, it is to cut off or cut down. And that is seven, which is obviously the completion of something, the perfection, something done perfectly as Yah desires. Now, as we see, what this means is Yah, the Father or Abba, who is before all and over all, gives all authority to the Prince, who is highly exalted to be the covering of the insufficiency of man. By the strength and sufficiency of his Abba, he shall plow the hearts of mankind, cut off the branches, slash the works of the wicked or proud, and harvest in the fruit to the completion of Yah's perfect desire. Cedars are large, breathtaking, aromatic trees, which in Lebanon grow on the rocky hillsides and the crags of the outcropping of boulders and the surrounding forests. The scent of a cedar is almost sweet, like perfume, and they are nearly impervious to insects that would destroy them. Moths and beetles and termites, they avoid them. The roots, unlike most other trees whose roots grow somewhat shallow near the surface of the ground, the cedar tree's roots are not easily discouraged. They're tenacious even, and they grow or go deep, seeking the water and nutrients. They are often wide and outspread even the canopy, and they often eliminate the useless vegetation around it. The wood is strong and very resistant to decay. It's no wonder why Shlomo or Solomon overlaid the cedar wood above all else with gold for the temple of Elohim. So we see even in the Psalms or Tehillim that we are likened to the growth of a cedar of Lebanon. Tehillim or Psalms 92, the righteous one flourishes like a palm tree. He grows like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of Yahuwah Elohim flourish in the courts of our Elohim. They still bear fruit in old age. And Hosea, or Hosea, as it said in the Greek, it says he will strike root like the Lebanon cedar and his shoots will go forth. His splendor will be like the olive tree in his fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. So, do we have faith-filled believers? Do we represent this aromatic, desirable, and luxurious tree? Let's look at some of the other characteristics of some of these cedars of Lebanon to see. Now, as stated above, some of the cedars, as the cones release their small seeds to be carried on the wind, find themselves planted in the soils between the rocky outcrops on the crags of the hillside. And if these seeds are planted in fertile soil, well watered and availed of continuous light, they will grow. But unlike their brethren in the large, open, spacious forest floors, these cedars are subjected to high winds, arid heat, hail storms, and frigid cold. This often twists the trunks and even causes them to bend almost to the point of breaking. 
and instead of the large, aromatic, overextending canopy of the majestic forest cedar, these trees looked deformed, beaten up, twisted, and lacking the obvious beauty of their fellow forest dwellers. Their life is a fight to survive, seeking water and resisting the constant barrage of the external forces. These forces seem almost set to destroy this tree's growth and even its very life. Now, there's something amazing about the cedar tree as stated above. The wood is quite sought after because of the large unhindered tree will produce wood of such beauty and pleasant aroma. Red and white colors intermix with beige and even browns make this wood very valued. But the hillside crag cedar trees are valued even more. These trees produce deeper reds and browns with startling whites with beige contrasts. The twists in what would seem to be from the external view, a deformed, beaten down, nearly broken shell of its forest brethren, hides its true character. Those deep scars, twisted trunks, and suffering limbs, who fought to stay planted, not uprooted by or broken by the storms of life, produce such a character of inner beauty that each twist and bend deepens the color, strengthens the fibers as to be something to look upon once you get past its outer appearance. Now, as we see up here, we have a hillside cedar grown in the crags between the boulders right here in the upper left. And as you can see, the trunk is twisted, contorted, kind of looks broken with very little foliage, not much to look at. But then as you go down, you see a piece of wood, just a piece of a cedar tree, very much like the one above. And how beautiful that is, how rich it is, how those twists and turns Make this something to be sought after. If you go online, you'll find so many things built with that very type of cedar. They are so beautiful. And in contrast, we see the forest dweller right here in the middle of the screen. And that forest dweller is big, huge, luxurious, and it provides that covering. And again, we see up in the upper right-hand corner, another cedar, twisted and contorted, beaten down weathered almost looks like it's something of no value but that cedar wood is of extreme value well so too it is with the faithful believer some are planted in the spacious forest floors and although they do struggle to get nutrients and they fight to stay in the light of the sun or even resist the occasional fires of life they seem to have struggled less than their brethren planted on the hillside crags now, each will have its own struggles, and if each stays in the water of the word, lets her roots dive deep, and strives to stay in the light of Elohim, resists the forces around them that seem to want to destroy them, it will produce a strong faith, character, long-suffering, a thing of beauty, something others will see and desire for themselves. Our struggles, our trials and tribulations have a purpose, brethren. And if we hold fast and endure to the end, stay watered, deepen our roots, and always seek the light, we too will bear fruit in our old age and be without decay or rot an eternal life. We will be a pleasing aroma to our Abba Yah and filled with his character, a beautiful thing to behold. And as we saw above, the cedar tree is a perfect picture of Yah the Father providing the covering for our insufficiency. Yahusha, he is the covering, and he cuts down the self-exalted. And much like the cedar tree provides a covering for the forest floor below and its seedlings, it also cuts off the nutrients to the destructive things around it. We are being lifted up like the cedar for the brethren. As we stay under the canopy or covering of Messiah, we too are called to be a covering by our love. So, hold fast, brethren. Like the cedar, no matter where you were planted, know that Yah is working something beautiful within you and is faithful to complete his perfect work. Isn't that beautiful, brethren? That's one of the most beautiful things when I look at it, and it's that way with every word. Every single word, as you dig deeper into it, its meaning, its roots meaning, this only covers a portion of it. Look how beautiful that is. Look at the picture he gives us. Look what he's lifting us up for. Brethren, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you enjoyed it. 
I would love to hear your comments below. As always, like and subscribe, but share. Share the word of Elohim. Share his love. Nothing greater. It's the thing we can share the most between ourselves, a light to all men, love our enemies, but mostly love you who are our Father with everything and all that we have and are, all that is within us. We love you. We thank you. And if Yah wills it to be so, we'll see you again in the next time. Thanks.